Alright, what the fuck is up? Welcome back. My name is Noah Hills. You can find me on Twitter at Noah More Parties. You can find my written work and my running back rankings at NoahMoreParties.com. And I'm back at the desk for, what is this, the third Saturday in a row because we have another special guest today. Uh, conversation with the director of football at PlayerProfiler.com. A guy who eats three steaks a day, 18 eggs, 16 pieces of bacon... And the only thing he drinks is monsters and uh, protein shakes. We got Cody Carpentier. Cody, tell the people what's up. What do you got going on? How's it going? Cody, I think I muted you. Did I mute you? Cody, you're unmuted. Go ahead and tell the people what's up. I appreciate it, man. Thank you for the incredible intro, obviously, of uh, the, the amount of meat that I eat. <laughs> I, I kind of chuckled. I was waiting to see what where you were going to go next. 60 minutes of bacon. <laughs> I kind of like that. Um, but I appreciate you having me on, man. That's uh, I love to chop it up. It's, it's draft season. I know you you love to get into these prospects. I love getting into these prospects. So uh, I'm, I'm excited. Hell yeah, hell yeah, yeah. I'm glad we could uh, glad we could connect. Um, let's just go ahead and jump into it. You've been kind of all over the place this off season. I believe you were at the combine. Uh, you were at the Senior Bowl. You've been at a few of the big pro days. Uh, who is a guy in this running back class? who was more impressive in person than you expected him to be? I guess the most impressive one in person, Roshan, okay, I mean, it's the easy one to start with. Uh, he was massive, man. He's, he, I know he has a, a big surface area, um, but he's overpowering at the Senior Bowl. Um, I'd never saw him in person, obviously, before that. And being there on the field, that's kind of your first uh, place of, of getting exposed to these players during this draft process for this current class. And him, he was like, it took me... Uh, took me all day the first day of practice which is the only day he practiced took me all day but three hours and i was like man who is who, what is this comp for him you know and, and it came with sean alexander um and that was big surface area upright runner um yes the testing wasn't great four five eight uh he backed up Bijan robinson for a few years but he was third with the 10 in the 10 yard splits at the nfl combine um i would say roshan Far and away, I know I came in high on him uh, from the film and from conversations with the likes of Alex Dunlap, who is uh, from Roster Watch and Orange Bloods. But once I saw him in person, it was pretty easy, pretty clear. Like, I like Tyja Spears. I liked Eric Gray. But when you compared the three body types, <laughs> it was like, all right, this is a dude right here. And, and I, was, I was excited about that. Okay. Yeah. I like that Sean Alexander comp. He didn't, he didn't run a fast 40 either. I mean, that was obviously like, you know, 25 years ago now, but he was like four, five, seven. I want to say. So he was one of those big thumpers without a lot of speed. Um, who's a guy who you saw, like, maybe not necessarily any shade, but who's a guy who you were, like, maybe a little underwhelmed seeing him in person? Like, he didn't look as jacked as you thought he would be or, you know, whatever it was. So I wrote this one down, uh, you know, a week ago before the pro day happened, but Zach Evans, and I know you, you, you've talked about Zach Evans. You've been in the streets on him for a minute. Uh, he was 202 pounds at the combine. Not only was he 202 pounds, but he was, he was like puny. He just had like tiny features, uh, mm -hmm. and undersized and, and quite frankly, it just it really took me back. I was, cause I was walking around getting, get, getting eyes and getting feel and getting, you know, words from all these guys. And I, I got up to him. I was like, wait, 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 this is not, this is not at all what like an elephant. <laughs> Camara type body type I was looking for mm -hmm. and it was like Josh Downs was kind of the same way at receiver and they were just puny guys based on everything that I saw before I thought that Zach Evans was the only guy in this class that had the upside to compete with Bijan over the course of the next four or five years as far as upside goes and ability to overtake that number one spot not saying that he's going to but I thought that he was the only one that could um, and then seeing him at the combine it really let me down but last week he, he weighs in at supposedly 208 pounds um, he runs I think it was a 445 if you don't correct me wrong um, so I'm turning the page back onto him but I, I was really in a weird weird spot there because it was the I was very let down. There's been a couple other guys too that uh, you know early on, Eric Gray, great senior bowl, but ever since then it's been chick, 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 downhill, downhill, downhill. Did not look good at his pro day, and, and yeah, so I guess those would probably be the two guys. Okay, and, and I don't know if you you probably I mean you saw him at the combines. So you probably didn't see Zach Evans like with his shirt off, uh, but. Just based on your your impressions, like seeing him up close, does he look like a guy who's like maxed out frame wise? I know he put on you know supposedly like six pounds between the combine and the pro day, but does he look like a dude who who might play at two fifteen and just dropped weight? Does he look maxed out at like you know two oh five ish? What were your kind of impressions there? I would not say he looked maxed out. I, I think that the two oh two, you know, I, I obviously didn't see him at two oh eight. I'm assuming there's not that 
that big of a difference. But mm -hmm. it, it was shocking just because he obviously he's in the SEC school and he came from TCU. It's like down in Texas. He grew up in Texas. Like lifting is a thing, right? So um, I expected <laughs> just a little more filled out. And no, so your, your, your answer is no. I don't think he's completely done. Like I think there is room to fill out. I think there's room to grow. And I'd love to see that. But at the stage of the game that we're in, it's like you need to be filled out now. That's why yeah. Bijan is the way Bijan is. That's why – that conversation doesn't a couple years ago it was Bijan and Zach Evans and Biggs being all these guys and now it's just Bijan because those things come into account right so I think that there's room for him to put 10 12 pounds on will he do it can he do it I don't know I've, I've heard you know dating all the way back to high school like there's just off-field question marks about him not that, like negatively but just like question marks and I don't know it's like if he maybe he doesn't like to lift maybe he doesn't like to do that type of stuff maybe he's just a, a natural talent we've seen that from guys in multiple sports um i don't know but i i, I like him i like the talent a lot it's just again like the, the frame i was like god damn man what you are i, I always thought like people say people compare like gibbs or go like, oh, gibbs can be the next camara like no i thought zach evans was the next camara right yeah yeah as a runner I think they got some similar, like, you know, movement styles and things like that. He's obviously not the pass catcher like a Gibbs or Camara um, would be. But yeah, as as runners and with the kind of contact balance that Evans shows, I, I definitely see that as well. So that's Zach Evans. Let's talk about Tyon Evans. I know you're a Tyon Evans guy, and you, you tweeted like a couple weeks ago that he's got the highest dog rating in the 2023 class. What is, what is the dog rating, and what makes Evans the top of that list for you this year yeah this was a this is a good one you always find you know going deep into these random dudes that <laughs> maybe didn't have the the biggest stat lines and stuff and uh dog the definition of dog is tough right everyone's like i, I got asked on an interview a couple it was like a month ago on like a radio show and they're like dog d-a-w-g you put the dots in between there what does it mean i'm like i don't really have a, an explanation <laughs> of what d is what a is what w is what g is it's just like you got that dog huh mm -hmm. and it, it's built off a of multitude of things one being in person um, and in person, Tyon was extremely assertive, a straight to the point guy uh, at the combine. A lot of his, a lot of my game, I haven't been able to show yet, is one thing that he said. Uh, his running style, I thought, was that of Damian Pierce, the Marshawn Lynch realm, um, which I really liked that Damian last year was just that aggressive nature that he had uh, playing through college. Not opposed to metal music is one thing that he said. Did not expect that. <laughs> not just opposed. Like random shit like that. Not, I'm not. Yeah, he's like, I'm not opposed to it. I'll listen to it. Um, he likes anime. You know he's a psychopath like uh, Jamal Williams. Like he wears a goat necklace. Uh, like just like multiple things. It's like that people don't necessarily would take into account. They're like, what the fuck does that have to do with anything? It's like, no, dude. Like, no. He, he wears a goat necklace. He thinks he's him. He played a JUCO and he had a couple ninety-five yard touchdowns his freshman year. A couple thousand, couple two thousand yard seasons in high school. Um, never crested six hundred through college. Uh, I just don't. He's he's very. The interactions with him were really good. I think he's dialed the fuck in. I think he's ready to put a hole in someone's chest, uh, whether he has a helmet on or not. And it's just one of those guys that I thought coming away from interviews in person, interviews online, how he plays the game. It's it was pretty clearly him above everybody else. Um, if I pulled up the the rankings, I, I I think I tweeted it out the other day that he was number one, but I don't think number two was very close behind. Rose yeah, on yeah. seven point four. So it was like it was like point three five points behind him. Whereas last year, I think it was Damian and then Kenneth Walker was a little bit behind him. So Tyon Evans, man, I didn't I didn't think I was going to have him as high as I do, but I do. Yeah, yeah, I like him a lot as well. I think he's 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 a beast. He's a dog. I've seen like uh, post game interviews with him with wearing like eye black, just painted over one eye, looking like like Rufio yep. or like somebody from Mad Max or something. This this one's not on the show sheet, but uh, I'm curious. Like we've heard from. Uh, reports out of the Senior Bowl in years past that, like, I, I think Brian Robinson last year, people were talking about him as, like, impressive physically in person, but also just walked around with, like, an alpha attitude. Was there a guy in this year's group like that who kind of, like, took charge and, like, owned owned the position group maybe at the Senior Bowl or the Combine? Yeah, this, I mean, the Senior Bowl where we talked about Roshan, that was the pretty clearly day one. It was like you could just, the sense around everyone, it was you could tell Roshan was like the dude. And it was weird because Roshan's never had the spotlight on him. He's never had the opportunity to be the dude. It's obviously he's always been behind Bijan Robinson. So I would say, yeah, clearly day one, you could tell it was Roshan. Then after that, there really wasn't. It was, you know, Tyja Spears is probably the next best player. Um, 
um, at the senior bowl at the running back position. Yeah, as, as far as separating themselves, no. Obviously, I, I remember Brian Robinson. He was one where, you know, when you did the size up, I think I tweeted this out last year during the combine, was the size up. And, and, and Robinson walked around, and he had, like, this big black sweatshirt on, and you could just see the traps popping out of him. And he was, like, 228. And he just – his attitude – it wasn't that he was, like, I'm um, the elf. It was just, like – it was almost like the I'm just here so I don't get fined type of thing where he was just like, I don't, I don't, I don't give a shit why I'm here. I'm just getting my job done and I'm going to, I'm going to look big as shit doing it. And it was just, you know who it was? Who's that big ass from Utah? Tavian Thomas. Yeah. Tavian Thomas might've been the Brian Robinson from this year. Now that I'm thinking about the combine, um, because not a lot of people were talking to him and he just sat there and I mean, he was monster. I don't know what he waited 247 maybe mm-hmm. or something like this. Yeah. yeah and I think he so. was just a massive, massive dude that didn't really have to say anything. I don't, I don't even know if I heard him say very much. Um, I just I, I just thought of that right now. So that was a that's an interesting one. I don't have him ranked very high at all though. Right, right. Yeah, he doesn't he doesn't pop for me either. But yeah, big dude, obviously. Yeah, I think he was like two thirty seven uh at the combo uh six foot three. Like he's he's a big dude. One of the things I like most about you and your analysis, Cody, is that you just you don't give a fuck what other pe like what other conclusions other people are coming to, like and your comps are always pretty creative. Like, like uh, Bijan is getting Edgerin James and Saquon Barkley and Ladanian Tomlinson comps. I don't, I don't remember when it was, but you, you comped Bijan Robinson to Cam Akers and Marshawn Lynch. Yeah, You got flamed for that a little bit. I think both of those make a little bit more sense than people were giving you credit for in your Twitter mentions. What parts of their games do you see in Bijan? And how likely do you think it is that Bijan kind of struggles to get his footing in the NFL the same way that Akers has? I, I always think it's hilarious. You know, you bring up the Saquon one. And it's like, well, Edger and James, first off, Hall of Famer, shout out, uh, Miami. And uh, Saquon, it's like, okay, so this guy's going to be a generational prospect and a generational athlete. Okay, cool. We get that with Saquon. It's like, but but anybody who watched Bijan knows he's not a generational athlete. Like, he's mm-hmm. a good athlete. Nothing wrong with that. Cam Akers was a really good college prospect. Cam Akers was a pretty good athlete. And I – the, the thesis behind the cam side of it was that I said, uh, I think I said this to, to, to Alex and Alex has watched Bijan and Rocha more than anybody, which orange bloods. And I said, he's what, he's what everyone wanted cam Akers to be. He's what everyone expected cam Akers to be. And like from a positive side, I'm not saying he's going to be cam, but I think it's what everyone wanted cam to be. Obviously he's not what he was. Um, and then the Marshawn Lynch one was just kind of the play style with the, the, the ability to break tackles, the, the understanding of his own body. I think more than anything I said, you know, Maybe to answer your question about about Cam, what his struggle to get going, like I don't know, ten fifteen percent. I don't see a, a big struggle for Bijan because I think he's much more progressed uh, as a prospect than Cam was. He's a much, I, don't, I guess I don't know how to say this. He's he's a much more advanced player much more advanced to prospect mentally than i think cam was as well again the marshawn one was more towards the running style the cam one i think it fits him in the sense that both are fantastic uh, but i think it's Bijan was was really what people expected cam to be yeah i think cam has i mean cam's obviously had the injuries that have really just yeah. fucked him over but he also was playing on a terrible team at florida state he's a converted college or high school quarterback like he was just not put in a situation to like develop actual running back skills in college but he was just freaky enough that we liked him anyway so I'm, but, but yeah like the, the shit where you come up with a comp that people don't like or it's like a player who hasn't been like awesome in the nfl and so like you're automatically a dumbass <laughs> that kind of shit is just so counterproductive. Like, if the only thing you can say about Bijan is he's going to be a Hall of Famer, then, like, what are we doing here? The goal is to learn about players, figure out their strengths and weaknesses, and if we've already decided that Bijan is Jim Brown, then, like, why, why, <laughs> why even write or read or watch anything about these players? I just want to say I wanted to ask you this question because it, it, the way that I, I – I think the way that I've progressed through my comps is that when you get down to the lower-end guys, right, you can't be like, oh, let's see, um, uh – Chase Brown or Cameron Peoples, these guys are Saquon Barkley. Chase Brown, <laughs> Saquon Barkley, because he's an athlete. It's like you you have to have a, a thought behind why you compare this guy to this guy. So I, I just kind of want to bounce it back to you, and I want to know what because I, I haven't seen, maybe I missed it, who your comp was for Bijan. Because I, I've again, everybody always like goes to the Saquon one, but I don't know. Is your and I don't hope I'm not jumping on it, but is yours? Who is yours? Yeah, mine is not Saquon. I, I get the Saquon thing, but yeah, I, I think Saquon's a little bit yeah. freakier of an athlete than Bijan. Yeah. And because of that, I don't think he's quite as developed or didn't come out of Penn State quite as developed as Bijan is currently. Uh, Bijan's had to like figure his way, um, not just juking everybody. 
Uh, but but my kind of like top end uh, Bijan comp has been David Johnson uh, with like the downfield mm. pass catching, kind of like an inside thumper who's also got like a nice jump cut, good speed. But I could also see Bijan falling somewhere on like the Joe Mixon spectrum where he, you know, he lands on a team where like he's big and he can catch passes. But sometimes those guys only get used as as two down. Ba- like Joe Mixon is one of the best like receiving running backs out of college football in the last 10 years like he was ridiculous at Oklahoma you know going up the seam up the sideline like beating linebackers and and you know nickel corners and coverage and he hasn't done that in the NFL really at all because yeah. you're not forced to be creative with him because he's also 225 pounds and can like run the rock 20 times in between the tackles Bijan could end up the same way where like half of what's so appealing about him gets wasted uh, like it has for Mixon but at his peak I could see him making an impact similar to like David Johnson. Um, so that's kind of kind of where I've gone with it. Um, I like that. Kendra Miller. I love how hard Kendra Miller runs. Um, one of the things that I've wanted to see from Kendra Miller this offseason is athletic testing because he's he's great in the open field. He breaks a ton of tackles. And those are things that not necessarily, but very often uh, can be accomplished just through like sheer athleticism. Like like Saquon is like that. Uh, I don't think Kendra Miller is Saquon as an athlete, but because that's the way that Kendra wins, I've wanted to see athletic testing numbers, and he's hurt, so we, we're not going to see that. Uh, what kind of athlete do you think Kendra Miller is, and are you, like, how confident are you that he can turn into, like, a Damian Pierce, Chris Carson, Javante Williams type guy in the league? I think Kendra is one of the most interesting players in the entire draft uh, at the running back position because there's so much uh, you know, question mark or hypothetical out there. And I think the easiest one I tie it to is always Javante because Javante went early second, right? Javante played with Michael Carter. Well, Kendra played with Zach Evans and 20 years old and came out and scored touchdown every single game, over a thousand yards, bang, 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 bang. All this stuff's lining up. And then the speed's there. And, you know, what's the expectation of speed? I, I projected like a four five one four five two, And then of course at the combine, he's like, I'm not going to test throughout the entire draft process. And it's like, fuck, all right, well, yeah. is he – the fifth pick in the second round or is he the fifth pick in day three or mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying like you, you, i guess we're, we're really not going to know i know lance Dearland always talks about like the fourth round being the round of like development and projection uh in the nfl draft but a guy like kendra i don't think you could lump him into that same the same bin of a michael carter or a damian pierce he just I, to me he doesn't feel like he's in that bin as far as testing goes like i said i think four five two i actually i like like a chris carson type for him i don't know I, it's 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 tough for me to really wrap my head around kendra completely I, I think he's a fine athlete um i've seen the concerns uh with vision i guess i've seen some people talk about that but i i i, I really like him i don't know yeah he's he's a tough one for me too because the good stuff is so good I wasn't impressed by his like vision and decision making at the line of scrimmage. I just bought yeah. the I just bought Waldman's RSP. He loved Kendra Miller's decision making. I've seen people say he's like a really good pass catcher. I've seen people say he can't do that at all. Like the the opinions on him are, are all over the place. Um, another guy who is obviously talented, but who has opinions a little bit all over the place is Devon A. Chain. He's not really your type of guy. He's probably not high on on the dog rating. He's not gonna punch anybody in the mouth. He's not he's not eating three steaks a day. How, what level of confidence are you at with A. Chain someday producing like RB two or better fantasy seasons in the NFL? Like ten, like. 10 15 percent i was just talking about this on i was just talking about this with uh theo um our, our he's a he's a high stakes player theo griminger um i was like man what, what do you what do you think about a chain do you and he's like oh i think there's a world where he's he's gonna be a thing and i was like i just i really don't feel it like 10 15 percent and the guys that i was looking at it's the guys that everyone looks at right cj spiller jamal charles um and spiller is 196 pounds and a top 10 pick in the nfl draft which a chain's not going to be. He only had two seasons as a top 30 fantasy back. He's RB 29 in year two, RB nine in year three. Jamal Charles did it five times in his first seven seasons, but his workload was ridiculous. I don't think he's going to have a ridiculous workload anywhere that he goes just because of the state of football right now. And then CJ 2K was the third one. He did it each of his first six seasons, but again, he had the draft capital and a dumb workload with 290 plus touches each season. I don't see A-Chain being a guy that can get more than, you know, 
and I was talking to Theo about this, Theo's like, oh, I think he can get 12 to 15 a game. And I was like, I don't think he's he should get more than 8 to 10 a game. And what are you going to do with those 8 to 10 touches? Are they all going to be carries? Are they all going to be, you know, working out of the backfield? Like, I just don't see a world where, especially in fantasy, that I'm like consistently going to be betting on Devon Achen to give me something. So I think it feels like, I don't know, I want to hear your thoughts on this, but it feels like the fantasy community has actually kind of pulled back a little bit from what I've, I've, I've kind of gotten from Devon Achen. I know I'm, our man Ray G was a big fan fan of, of, of Devon A. Chain at least a year ago when Spiller was coming out, but I just don't see it with the frame. I don't I don't like uh, my write up on him. I was I was very not nice about it. I just don't think as far as being an NFL running back that, that he fits he fits the scheme. I'm trying to pull it up right now. Um, my bit my biggest issue I think was just his lower body. Um, I thought he had tight knees and that kind of disabled his agility to unlock his ceiling. Um, I think he has good pass catching with slow reaction time, I thought, but I think he has an insane ability to get north and south, but I just, I don't see that. Like you have to be special, I think, to be able to just have that speed. Like Jalen Hyatt, the wide receiver position is a one trick pony. All right. If Devon A. Chain's a one trick pony, he's got to be literally Chris Johnson. And I just don't think that he's actually at that level that, you know, come back to the comp thing. It's like, all right, everyone compares him to Chris Johnson, CJ Spiller. These are like the ultra high end. It's like, okay, well, what about like a Philip Lindsay or a, you know, some shit like that? Like it's, you you can't, you got to think not always ceiling. Which is yeah, where yeah. automatically. Yeah, Philip Lindsay's a good one that I, for some reason, have just it has never occurred to me with A Chain. But I, I don't hate that. It for me, A Chain has always felt like if if anybody is going to be Chris Johnson or Jamal Charles like ever again, like if if we haven't seen the last of those guys, A Chain feels like as good a bet as anybody who's come out since then. But none of those guys are like objectively good bets like in a vacuum. Um, but those are like my high end you know, kind of like speculative comps. And then the next one down has been like Raheem Mostert for me. Um, But, but I really like, I really like Philip Lindsay. That's a guy who got a lead back workload at around that size, um, who was, you know, a legitimate runner, not, not an elite pass catcher. But yeah, I, I don't, I don't know where the, where the fantasy community has gone with a chain. I personally, I, I feel like he's pound for pound, the most talented running back in this class. But the fact that he's so small hurts him. But but I was impressed with like his decision making. I I don't think he's Gibbs as a pass catcher, but maybe he's like Charbonnet, just like super fast as a pass catcher. You know, he can he can run a wheel route, he can catch a swing pass, he can catch a screen, things like that. So it it'll is be he a top ten guy for you in the class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. talent. Well, okay, on my current running back rankings, which. I go back and forth whether I want to account for like predicted draft capital or not with these guys um, before yeah. the draft, but I have him as as RB two right now just based on just based on talent. I think he's I think he's a better runner than Gibbs is. Yeah, I don't know. I think he's really good. So you say RB two is that RB two based on? So when I grade these guys, like right now, my entire brain is focused on NFL, and then when the draft happens, then I'll kind of shift towards fantasy. And right now, I kind of just work with Matt in giving him my thoughts, and then I just he kind of puts that into the fantasy side of things. But so right now, like A chain's eleven for me at running back, and that's looking from an NFL eyes perspective. Like if I'm building a team, do I want A chain or would I rather have X Y Z ahead of him? Right? Is yours looking directly at fantasy right now, or are you just looking at the talent? Yeah, I think mine is sort of like yours. I, I don't, I don't think I put that uh, that same exact thought process to it, but it's just like ignoring fantasy football. Who do I think are the best running backs, and I'll order them in that direction. Yeah. But yeah, I guess I, I'm not thinking about building an NFL team necessarily either. It's just like who who's who's the most impressive to me? And yeah. A chain right now is number two. But I but I really could be convinced in any order with like my top four or five. And I would not be surprised to have to move A chain significantly down after the NFL draft, you know, if he's a fourth round guy or or even a third round guy. I don't think he will be though, because I think the speed alone, like I think I saw a mock that was like Jordan Reed that had him in the third. Um, I think Ray had that on today, and I think it had Devon A chain like late third to San Francisco and. The, the scary thing with that is like then his rule is kick returner, punt returner. Mm-hmm. That's kind of what I'm scared of is like I we, everybody knows he can do that. Everyone knows he has the track speed. And it's like I just am scared that he will get lodged into that Kenny and Wongi rule and he's just kind of like in no man's land. And I guess 
the frame is is one thing for me that like completely pushes me off like this let's see the slightest person i have obviously gibbs is up there he's 200 pounds um the other one that's under 200 is spears spears i have one spot ahead of a chain uh but they're like razor thin close and it's like the, the frame i think is the biggest thing um the speed is obviously there but like i said my biggest thing i think was just more so the directional stuff um with a chain but i i I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 that's why I like to have these conversations because I, it, at times I feel like I'm low on a guy like that. I like I, I think I'm low on like a Sean Tucker, for example, and then I think I'm high on other guys. So um, it's 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 nice to hear your thoughts, especially in your your way of attacking it. And having him at two makes me makes me it does make me think. Yeah, I think I'm more impressed by his his like lateral explosiveness than you seem to be, um, and I'm also pretty yeah. impressed with his just like his his ability as an actual running back. Like I. Going into going into his tape, I was expecting Keaton Mitchell type stuff, where he's just looking to bounce everything outside, um, you know, toss plays and you know, just shit where they can get him out in space and like go be an athlete. And I felt like he was used like a legitimate, like workhorse running back. Oftentimes, like that LSU game where he had almost forty carries, a lot of it, you know, ISO leads up the middle and and inside zone plays where he's not just bouncing outside. Um, so I I was really impressed by him as a as just a pure running back outside the size concerns, which are very legitimate, obviously. So do you think that like an eight to ten carry or an eight to ten touch thing is like on the low end? Because like I said, Theo, I was talking to him. He said like twelve to fifteen. Uh, I'm assuming by the expectation of like RB two would be that he can probably take on the big workload of two hundred plus. I think he can. I think he can do it. I. I wouldn't predict that he will. I, I think my my like high end hopes for him are not likely, but they're he I think he at least has the talent where like if everything goes right, if, if everything went right for every running back in this class, A Chain is better than everybody except for Bijan, I think. I just think mm. things are less likely to go right for him because of his size and because it, and we're gonna have to trust an NFL team to like give him a big workload. It's less yeah. likely that he reaches his ceiling. But his ceiling is a lot better than for most other guys in the class is, is kind of how I think about it. You you did just mention Sean Tucker maybe being low on him. He's one of the most divisive running backs in this class. Some people love this guy. I've seen him as high as like RB3. Some people have him like outside the top 10. Where are you at on Sean Tucker? I, I don't know what to do with <laughs> Sean Tucker. Like I, I told you before the show started, I'm working on the draft guide right now. And I'm, I got all this stuff done and I'm just kind of like plugging it in right now. And Tucker's one of the guys where I don't have it all done because I don't know what to do. And it's like, I, maybe I'm sandbagging. Maybe I'm one of the ones that's like bagging sand on this, on this uh, YouTube pro day thing. But I don't like, okay, cool. I can trust it that it's probably in the same ballpark, but it just gives me a lot of question marks. I wasn't that, you know, um, enthused with him in person at the combine. It's just, I guess I got, I just, I guess I got a kind of a weird feel truthfully. Uh, <laughs> I have him RB 12 right now. And I, again, like I said a minute ago, I don't know what to do with this guy because I think that he can take on a decent workload, but I don't think that I expected him to be, I don't know what I expected really out of the guy um, based on what he did in, in college. You know, I, I came away with like a James white out of him. Like I saw a lot more downfield when I went back and watched him than I thought I was going to see. Um, I think he's got obviously great lower body strength. I think he, he looks like he could probably squat five, 500 fucking pounds. I think he can get bullied in the passing game. As far as the blocking goes, um, I don't think that's his strong suit. And the, the way I guess I wrote it, I wrote it up was he's listed at 210, but he looks to be around 200 in person. He plays quick for his size but he seems closer to Eckler he seems closer to Eckler than Eric Gray um, as far as the size goes but it doesn't come it doesn't portray that way I don't know if that made sense but that's kind of how I kind of understood him I, again like I, I'm in a really tough spot with Tucker I just have him sitting out there in no man's land a chain Tucker and Gray is my 11 12 13 and it's just kind of like a spot that I don't like any three of those guys I don't not that I don't like them I don't know what to do with the three of them I should say okay okay you mentioned Eckler and you mentioned James White those are both two really good receivers do you yeah. is that is that kind of the mold you see Tucker in um or is he like a Tevin Coleman like what sort of like archetype do you expect? That's what I thought. I thought more of like a Tevin Coleman. I thought more of the, I thought we were going to get more running out of him in the NFL, but then I, I watched and watched and watched and I saw more downfield stuff and it was like, all right, well, if they want to throw the ball to him downfield, then obviously they trust him and they think he's good at it. And and that's, in the NFL, I think he has to be good at a, he has to be a good receiving back to make it. So I, I'm going to lean with that. I'm going to lean, you know, that's the direction I'm going to, I'm going to trust him and, and push him towards. 
And if I'm proven wrong by an NFL team, if they if they draft him and they and they give him you know 15 carries and, and no targets, well then I guess that's where they want to go with him. But I think he is a guy that that can be a receiving back in the NFL. Obviously not on the Eckler level, probably not quite on the James White level, but I think it's something that uh, I'm more open to than I was. I guess I'd say probably four months ago. Okay, last August. This is last August. It's a long time ago. I, I did a lot of research for this, Cody. You tweeted out your early Shit. your early 2023 running back rankings last August, and you had Marshawn Lloyd ahead of Jameer Ooh. Gibbs as your RB4. Marshawn Lloyd is not in this class. He did not declare. But after a, you know, a pretty solid season at South Carolina, he's now at USC with Caleb Williams. Are you still high on Lloyd? If so, why? What do you think about the 2024 class in general? Yeah, I'm a little, I'm less excited uh, with how everything has went the last two years with the injury, Kevin Harris, Zaquandre, um, they were using like Jaheim Bell in South Carolina. I'm happy, however, that he, he dominated Christian Beal, uh, which is something that uh, he's god awful. He's, <laughs> he's god awful. And that's the reason Ken Walker may be transferred. I don't know. Yeah, uh, yeah. I still like Lloyd. I want to see kind of how this shakes out uh, with him going to USC because Austin Jones is still there. And then I think Relique Brown, like I saw an article that he played against Caleb Williams in high school or peewee or something. And the minute that he jumped into the transfer portal, Caleb was like, get here now. Let's win a championship. So that kind of excited me. Mm -hmm. Um, As far as the class goes next year, I haven't dove too deep into the running backs, more so just the quarterbacks. Uh, I'm trying to just finish up the 2023 class. But Marshawn's a guy that, I don't know, I, I, I really just point blank right now. I guess hindsight would be was probably a little hot on Marshawn, but I just saw a lot of like Chubb type of Chubb type of output from him. And I've just never been the biggest on Gibbs. I like Gibbs's speed, but I've just never been the biggest on him. So I think that's probably why Lloyd was ahead of him at that point. Okay. Yeah. I I'm pretty hot on Lloyd as well. Uh, he just like really popped in the numbers that I like to look at last season. And then I'm kind of just assuming he wins that job at this point. Like he was a big time mm-hmm. recruit got hurt, finally flashed last season. And if he wins that job and is like, if he even gets like a Travis Dye workload, I don't see how he's not one of the top five guys in next year's class, like right up there with Sanders and Henderson and Al. Like I, I'm I'm pretty excited about Lloyd and that 2024 class looks, you know, sneaky exciting, I think. But let's talk about Gibbs for a second. You mentioned you're a little bit lower on Gibbs than most. Is he your RB2? What's your comp for Gibbs? I've, I've seen comps... We've seen the Alvin Kamara one. Mine on the high end is like Reggie Bush, uh, just with the way that he could like be used in the NFL. Not necessarily stylistically. I think they're pretty different as far as the way they move and run. But for role, I could see some Reggie Bush type stuff. Are you are you an Alvin Kamara comp? Are you a Naeem Hines comp? James Cook? Where where are you at with Gibbs? James Cook. That's where I'm at. I'm w- I'm at James Cook. Um, we saw him come out last year. Obviously, I think he's a little more thicker through the bottom too. Uh, I think he's obviously an elite pass catcher. Everybody knows that. But I think it's with and without the ball. Uh, I saw him pick up a couple nasty blitzers playing for Alabama this last year. I think his lower body athleticism is, is great. I think it's high end agility, high end awareness. I think he does have a, a weird natural upright stance and frame that watching him kind of line up in the backfield uh, and almost like stand like straight up, it, it kind of gave me like this weird receiver type feel. And I don't think that that's going to do him well in the NFL if he if he doesn't like, I don't know if you say progress through that. But um, 200 pounds, it scares me a little bit, but it if they use him right, if they use him, I was going to say more in a, in a McCaffrey role. That's a terrible, terrible example because they use McCaffrey everywhere. If they use him kind of in a James Cook role where he's going to get a lot of pass catching reps, I think it's a guy that we can trust. And I, right now I have him at RB2. I have a Bijan way ahead of him. And then I have a tier break below him that, that goes down about a, a third of a point as well. So he's kind of just in no man's line by himself at number two. And uh, I'm, I'm, I feel like that's pretty consensus uh which i hate being which i hate being <laughs> and, and he's a 200 pound back which i generally don't lean towards and and like i said james cook which you compare it to last year if he is exactly what james cook was that doesn't make me feel good about the class but then i go down past him and i like these other guys you know a little bit more which is kind of weird he's he's another one where i view the range of outcomes just so wide he could he could be naeem mm-hmm. hines i think he's better than naeem hines but his production could be like naeem hines or it could be Reggie Bush, you know. It's it's tough to get a to get a read before the draft and before landing spot and how we should feel about him. Um, what? Okay, this is one guy that I don't have on the show sheet here. Uh, I would assume you have some opinions though on Zach Charbonnet. Seems to be a three down back. Seems to be able to run the ball. 
seems to be a decent athlete. Your face looks like you're not a Charbonnet fan, though. How do you, how do you feel about Zach Charbonnet? Um, I, it's funny because this is... Uh... I just tweeted a couple of things out this morning. I'm not, I'm, I might, I maybe one of the lower people in the whole community on Zach Charbonnet. And right now I'm staring at him being tied at RB five. I have him five with tank Bixby. They have the same exact grade. Charbonnet's got a little more size on him. I like tanks, uh, film a little more. The athleticism comes out in favor of, of Sharps a little bit. And then the dog rating comes, it's it's dead even. So it's it's really tight across the board for me. Charbonnet, I'm really not that big on. I've seen some kind of outlandish uh, number, like I think at number two. I don't think anybody has him number one, but I've seen like number two. And I just, I'm not on board with that. I don't think that, I think the driving force from day one was last year at the Senior Bowl. Um, the conversations that surrounded Roshan were, all right, this dude's at Texas and he's the backup. And the Senior Bowl is talking about Roshan in 2021, or in, sorry, in 2022. And then at the Damn. same exact time, Zach Charbonnet was supposed to be RB3 last year, right, mm -hmm. on paper, going into the process. And then Charbonnet goes back to school. And normally at that point, when you declare and then you come undone, or you, you, you go back to school, it's because you didn't get any po you didn't get a positive grade or someone told you something that you're not going to go drafted as high as you were. So he goes back to school. These guys are the same exact age. And for me, it's – pretty clear that Roshan's ahead of him. The athleticism does come in in favor of Charbonnet, just a hair. But I went through and I tweeted a couple things today. I'm just going to say them right now. Roshan at 58.5% of his carries outside of the tackles this year. 58.2% of Charbonnet's were inside the tackle this year. So I think you, when you look at Roshan, I think there's more, much more upside with Roshan, including in the passing game, where uh, you look at the snaps in the slot, which I know these aren't massive, but it just kind of gives you a view of where they trust them across the field. Roshan had 49 career snaps in the slot, Charbonnet 31, and I, or 41, sorry, and I think that 39 of them came in the last two seasons just at UCLA, and he did, uh, he had 100 less receiving yards on 20 more receptions with those same opportunities. <laughs> I, I, these are the two guys that I've been going back and forth with and comparing them. And it seems that I'm much more ahead on Roshan and I'm a bit behind on Charbonnet as far as comparing to the consensus right now. And I think the driving force, like I said, was a year ago. And I don't know, and I'd like to hear your thoughts on him too, because I think that that might be something that is inherently in the back of my head knowing that the NFL didn't love him last year and knowing how much the NFL does love Roshan. It's one that I think the the fantasy community could be in for a shocker when draft day comes and they're you know within 10 picks of each other or Roshan goes ahead of Zach Charbonnet in the NFL draft. Yeah, I think Charbonnet is one of these guys who, like, he checks all the box, like, just the basic boxes that everybody looks at. Like, he caught the amount of passes we want him to. He ran as fast as he needed to. He's as big as he should have been. He was productive. You know, like, there's not anything uh, from, like, a big picture perspective where you can look at Charbonnet and be like, he obviously can't do that. And so it's easy to be like, okay, this guy's a well-rounded player. Uh, there aren't a ton of those in this class. Like, he's got to be one of the few three or four or five best guys. I'm on board with that as well, but I, I do I do agree with you where there's, like, when you look closer, there's just some things about him that don't seem as good as, like, the, the well-rounded, you know, flawless, you know, kind of prospect that people – not that he's perfect, but he doesn't have – a lot of things to nitpick, but I think when you look closer, there are those. Like he's he's a, he's a he's a receiver, but that basically meant he caught a lot of screen passes and like dump offs in the flat. And if that's the qualifications for being like a three down back in the NFL, there are a lot of dudes who are three down backs in the NFL who don't actually get that work. And then yeah, uh, he was like, it, well, first of all, he had to. Uh, people talk about like Zach Evans losing his job and you know like never being the workhorse. Charbonnet was obviously the workhorse the last couple of years, but I don't think Zach Evans ever actually lost his job. He was out touching Kendra Miller at TCU. I mean, you could say he lost his job to Quinshawn, sure, but he also got hurt last season. It wasn't ever a situation where he just got simply outplayed and put on the bench. That happened to Charbonnet as a sophomore at Michigan. He was playing behind both Hassan Haskins and Blake Corum when he was coming in as like a higher touted recruit than both of them. Transferred to, UCL, to UCLA and, and good on him. Like it, it worked out. He balled out there. But I do think he's got these little things as a runner where just like he just like brain farts sometimes to the line of scrimmage. Like one thing I noticed continually in his tape is his approach to the line of scrimmage. He would like take these hops and like jump forward like two feet at a time and either land really close to the line of scrimmage where that's good. You know, you want to press to the line of scrimmage. 
but not before you've read things. And he just jumps yeah. up there and then is right there and can no longer read to the outside or he'll jump forward and miss a cutback lane or jump into a lineman. I, I just think he's a little bit less, a little bit less polished than it seems from like the bird's eye view as both a, a receiver, uh, cause he's not super versatile there. And as a runner, he was a little bit skinny at the combine. I know he was like two, 222 at his pro day, but the, the 40 time that he ran was based on him cutting weight quite a bit. So I don't personally have a problem with like his physical, you know, profile or his athletic profile, but like we can't have it both ways where like he's 220 and running four five because that didn't happen. So I don't know. I think I think there there are more nits to pick with Charbonnet than people than people want to believe. I agree a hundred percent. I think that I mean you brought it up right there. It's a good point. Is two fourteen four five three? All right. Well, if he's naturally two twenty, that's probably around a four six, right? And you know what my comp for him was David Montgomery and Montgomery ran like a four six four. And I actually I actually don't love Montgomery, but I like Montgomery more than I like Charbonnet in general. The biggest thing, like I think he's a hard runner. I think he's gonna be fine, but that's where exactly where I thought of Brian Robinson last year. Like he's a hard runner and he's gonna be fine. And I think Charbonnet's a better receiving back than Robinson is. Um, but he also went back to school. That was his reasoning. I'm going back to school to learn how to catch passes. It's like well, that's really why you're going back to school. Come on. Now. But I just think he lacks like the, the next level burst. I don't think he has long speed at all. Um, and I, I think he just is going to struggle getting past the second level. And it's just a, it's one, like I said, I just am completely, I'm completely pretty much out on him because of the, the feel of David Montgomery, the feel of Brian Robinson and just the, the lack of speed. And my, I just have like no interest in him, which is when I talk to anybody, everyone's always like, come on, Trevor Nays two or three. And I'm like, yeah, I think I've, I think I've got him at four right now, but I, I do think, I do think he is well-rounded, but those well-rounded guys don't always turn into David Montgomery, which I think is a decent comp. Sometimes those well-rounded guys turn into, I, I don't know, Jordan Wilkins or, or something like that. So, yeah. I, you know, yes. I, I think the floor is high. Like, he's not going to flame out of the league, but he might just be like a an RB2, uh, you know, kind of guy rather than, you know, day one bell cow. Uh, like, it kind of seems like everyone assumes he will be. But let me get you out of here on this one. We've talked about several guys. Just give us one other guy who you, we haven't talked about on this show that you that you like in this class who's just just pick one you like him tell us why uh, can we can we talk about tank can we, can we please sure talk yeah about tank? yeah let's talk about like, tank I want to know where you have tank because I feel like he hasn't done anything wrong in three years and he just gets you know like ignored we haven't talked about him in for whatever 45 minutes it's like every show you go on no one's talking about tank it's always like I said Charbonnet Bijan or Gibbs I mean in our in our realm it's it's Roshan and these other Tiger Spears and stuff it's like no tank man tank is uh you know 918 yards 1200 yards 1150 you know 11 20 30 receptions he runs a 4 4 5 at his pro day you know 10 foot broad jump he benches 21 reps it's like there's nothing wrong with any of those things i just <laughs> said and when i plugged in the athleticism the other day it, it brought him up from rb8 to rb4 and i'm like shit all right i'm, I'm still here on tank I, I i didn't i thought i left i guess i didn't leave because i think the the combine number came in the four fives and i was like Ugh. but then i saw the, the pro day numbers and i was much more happy well I want to know what you think about Tank because I I kind of love Tank. I don't think he's done anything wrong at Auburn. Auburn just sucks, and I don't think that's a good way to degrade a running back because the team sucks. Because there's a bunch of dudes uh, that I've watched. The team has been horseshit, but the running back has been able to make something out of it. Yeah, I think I think I don't remember where I have him now. I know I've moved him not just up but down like multiple times this off season as I kind of like try to wrap my head around it. But I think you mentioned that you have him and Charbonnet back to back, which I don't think I have a problem with because the pros in the Charbonnet profile are very similar to the pros in the Bigsby profile and the cons are also similar. Like Bigsby sometimes has a little bit of the chicken with his head cut off thing, but when he's when he's put together and like seemingly focused on the field, he looks as like physically impressive as anybody in this class outside of maybe Evans and Bijan. But like as far as the total package athletically, I don't think he tested like it, but he he just looks so good, so explosive on the field, and I originally had him buried. Uh he looked like he was yeah. going to be like the the spiller for me this year. But I'm coming around to the idea. I think I talked to Angelo uh, a couple weeks ago, and he was a little bit more in on Tank than I was, and kind of got my got my gears turning. We're like, if the worst thing that I can say about Tank Bigsby 
is that he, you know, was a little bit inconsistent, a little bit inefficient while he was trying to play hero ball on some terrible Auburn teams, uh, some terrible Auburn teams the past couple years. That sounds kind of like Cam Akers to me. And Tank Bigsby's never torn an Achilles. Why can't Tank Bigsby be the guy we thought Cam Akers was going to be? I And he caught a lot of passes too. He's got one of the highest target shares in this entire class. I'm I'm very open to being in on Tank Bigsby. I just haven't always been this offseason, but I... I don't know. You're in on him. Angelo's in on him. I'll I'll probably end up moving him up after this. I didn't think I was going to be there. And it's like he, you know, I guess coming into it, I was like, yeah, Bigsby's going to fall down. Evans is going to fall down. They're not going to be in the same ballpark as Bijan. Nobody's in the same ballpark as Bijan. Yeah. I mean, I came away with like a a big Aaron Jones, a Damian Harris. Uh, I like the Cam Akers. We said Cam Akers. I was like, ooh, that makes like the college profile and situation rings a bell with that exactly. Yeah, the 94th percentile college target share makes sense. He's 21 and a half years old. Um, and then I, it, it really was four, five, six at the combine and then goes to his pro day, 215 pounds, four, four, five. And I was like, okay, I get it. It's, it's a pro day, but the, the speed isn't completely zapped, right? That's kind of mm-hmm. what I was looking for. And, and that kind of was, I guess that might be really what brought me back on board. He, he, he was falling down into that range, though, after 10, I thought. And then he didn't. He jumped right back up. So Tank's one that I, I think um, – it's are you of the same ilk with this running back class? That you, like you're just completely confused where all these guys are going to go? Like I I listen to the NFL draft stuff. I, I'm heavily involved in the NFL draft stuff. But these running backs, man, the, the middle crop, I, I don't really know what to expect as far as uh, order in the NFL draft. Yeah, uh, outside of Bijan and Gibbs, I have no idea. It would not – shock me if Evans was the third running back off the board, Zach Evans, and it would not shock me if Evans was like a seventh round pick. It wouldn't shock me if A-Chain went in the late first because somebody fell in love with his his speed, and it wouldn't shock me if A-Chain was like a fifth round pick. Like, I, I just mm-hmm. don't know where, uh, like how to get a good read on a lot of these guys. Um, and I had, what was I going to say about Tank Bigsby? I had one, oh, oh like... The one thing that kind of keeps me in hanging on to Tank Bigsby is you you can fall ass backwards into production as a freshman in yep. college football uh, without being really able to play. Like like Isaiah Spiller was just the best running back at Texas A&M, could kind of do everything decently well enough for college football, but he, w- he was never efficient and it turns out like he's just not that good. That wasn't Tank Bigsby. He, you, can, you can make a decent argument that Tank Bigsby is one of the few best freshman running backs in the history of the ACC or, or of the SEC. He was super productive. He was stupidly efficient, and th- that doesn't happen on accident. Like you can't you can't be bad, play in the best conference in the country, be productive and efficient on a per touch basis on accident. And so either either Tank Bigsby was a beast as a freshman and then forgot how to play football in his sophomore and junior years when he, you know, the efficiency went down. Or the Auburn program is garbage, and he was trying to do his best, surrounded by by garbage. And I think this, I think option B is clearly the one that makes more sense there. So, yeah, you you've talked me into Tank Bigsby again. Uh, appreciate you coming on, Cody. Uh, follow Cody at Carpentier NFL on Twitter. Uh, he's putting together the draft guide. Go get the draft guide at PlayerProfiler.com when it drops. Uh, Cody's one of the coolest guys in this space, one of the best evaluators, in my opinion, in this space. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. Hit like, hit subscribe. Catch me on Wednesday. Peace.